Tokyo 1960 ANPO Protests The ANPO protest, which is the shortened Japanese version of the People's Council to Stop the Revised Security Treaty, was an event that took place in Tokyo, Japan in 1960 from May 20th to June 22nd, with three major general strikes on June 4th, 15th, and the 22nd. The cause behind the protest regards the immense negative response to the re-signing of the United States-Japan Security Treaty, which was originally signed as the San Francisco Peace Treaty in 1951. During this time, the U.S. set up multiple military bases throughout the country, kept the Japanese demilitarized according to Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution, and was in no way responsible or obligated to defend Japan in case of warfare. According to the essay on the MIT Visualizing Cultures website, written by Justin Jetsty, as noted in our primary source by DeBerry, these peace treaties raise the question to the Japanese of how harsh or how generous and how acceptable to the public they would be. On the supporting side, DeBerry explains that this pacifism for the U.S. military backing and troops sprang primarily from the determination to never again be victimized by war. Thus, the supporters thought the U.S protection was needed and integral for Japan to stay strong and grow as an economy and a country. Even though at the time Japan was implementing other economic policies to boost consumerism and income, these supporters held welcome signs for U.S. ambassadors and encouraged the re-signing of this treaty, as the Social Democrats saw the need for the U.S. protection and were in full support of Article 9. As a result, while only a small percentage of the citizens agreed with the re-signing of the peace treaty, hundreds of thousands protested against it. Not only did they think the treaty was unfair, imperialistic, and even endangered Japan, Japan to a point, but also Japanese nationality at risk, felt that somewhat stripped of their divine and inherent rights as a nation and people, and overall felt that this treaty impeded on the rise of Japan economically, politically, and culturally. Unfortunately for the protesters, the treaty was signed by Nishi and the members of the Daido, despite the long, strenuous days of protesting. While the Japanese may have lost this political battle, they created something that Japan hadn't seen before. A strong movement with the force of many that would essentially break Japan out of its last suppressed shell. The photographer who wonderfully grasped the essence of these protests, Hiroshi Hamea, was on the site to capture all the emotions and depths of the Japanese people, and zeroed in on the images he thought best portrayed how the people stood together and protested their heartfelt discontent as noted in his famous techniques of cropping images to change the focal points and messages of the photos. Although he took close to a thousand photos as the violence unfolded, he published less than 200 of these photos in a book titled The Record of Rage and Grief, published in 1960. Through his artistic ability in capturing the right image with the right message and portrayal, has allowed all viewers and the intended audience of this publication, such as fellow Japanese citizens, even members of the Diet Do, Americans, and many outsiders to see how Japan was struggling politically with peace and democracy. Through these images, the viewer can understand multiple aspects of Japanese life during this time in 1960s Tokyo. Men, women, and students in this picture were taken on June 21st. Shows that women got involved in the protest, which was really the first time women in Jap Japan stepped out into the political scene. Essays from the Visualizing Cultures website, written by Justin Jetsty, explain that the women who weren't students got involved because of a possible contamination of a ship carrying tuna. This spread an uproar amongst women, who traditionally cooked for their families and had a growing concern for their family's health and safety. Not only were these families concerned about the possible contamination, but this also encouraged the people to distrust the U.S. and the renewal of the security treaty because the ship was bombed by the U.S., in which some call the third bombing on Japan. Gender aside, the sitting down and leaning on each other, and even the flashing of a few, few smiles, show the sense of camaraderie and also emerged between the Japanese people as they sat together and talked while protesting. Although this photo is not one published in Maya's book, it's noteworthy because of the sense of partnership and togetherness that embodies the state of mind of the citizens and reflects how they were able to strongly unite for a common cause. Also, since this picture was taken the day before the protest ended with the passing of the treaty, perhaps the calm nature of this photo reflects the sense of hope that the people have, so their protesting was worthwhile. In this photo, taken on June 3rd, Hamaya doesn't fit all the people in the frame, but instead focuses in on a few people and their expressions, 
manners, and the way they carry themselves during the protest. This unique cropping style here eliminates the whole scene and instead intensifies the moment of sincerity, which was really all that's needed to tell the story. This memorable picture clearly shows a division of police and protesters, with one protester screaming and leaning into officers. Looking on the other faces also depicts the heartfelt emotions and strong disagreements of the treaty. The protesters are fierce with their confrontation, and so are the police in their defense, earning this photo a spot in Maya's book. However, this picture only a mere, is only a mere prelude to the greater violence that will come later, with many protesters and policemen injured and one student death. However, Maya's capture of hundreds of thousands of people holding hands in this photograph, taken the last day on the protest on June 22nd, they walk civilly and peacefully down the road, reflecting a sense of unity and peacefulness, and maybe, in a way, even democratization as they stand together. The ANPO protest didn't stop the sneaky resigning of the security treaty with the U.S., but the protesters that came together created a movement that was bigger than politics and bigger than the Japanese government itself. Published in Maya's photo book, this picture shows that how the Japanese held on to the strength and unity even after the treaty was resigned. Although the three pictures all are all from the AMPO protests because of the way Maya's photo style, the viewers can't really determine exactly where some of these pictures are taken or who some of these people are specifically, although that was his point. Amaya wasn't concerned with capturing the main figureheads like government officials, prime ministers, or even the U.S. ambassadors, because he believed the united protesters reflected all that needed to be shown. These pictures differ in the sense that they are different people in different places, with different poses most obviously. But really, they differ in only slight amounts. Different types of people are represented, such as men and women, and students versus non-students, and also police officials versus average citizens in which they show different emotions or intentions. However, they are more similar than they are different because each image represents the struggle and want for political change with the citizens rising up together protesting. We can also see the differences in gender, social class, and even the education levels aren't discriminated as everyone from different areas of the social spectrum are represented. Unfortunately, the protester, for the protesters, nothing changed politically for Prime Minister Nishi after he stepped down, except for a boost in the economy which would later end up distracting the Japanese from this political uproar. Beyond the initial show of the resistance they put on for the government, these photos that Hamaya bo Hamaya's book speaks to everyone who sees them. They help convey the hardship and serious resentment the average everyday Japanese citizen felt towards the renewed security agreement with the U.S. With the height of 300,000 protesters and over 10 million signatures on petitions, the Japanese represented a continuation of the unfair security treaty with the U.S. What the Japanese created with these protests was a humanitarian bond and movement for democracy that swept the nation. Violence occurred throughout the strikes and protests, and gates were trampled, walls scaled, one death, and many injured. But ending in the, mo the movement in a peaceful walkout by the Japanese, even though they lost to the government, reflects something very special and unique about the history of Japan and the people.